In this lesson, we are going to now introduce the concept of momentum and conservation of momentum. Momentum, by definition, so no proof is just given to you as momentum equals the mass of the object times the velocity of the object. It's a product quantity. So we've seen this before with force. Force equals mass times acceleration is a product quantity. Momentum is a product quantity. It's the mass times the velocity of the object. So you can have a large momentum for one of two reasons. Either you have a really large mass, like the Earth, right? The Earth has an extremely large mass. As it turns out, later in the course, we're going to see the Earth also has an extremely large speed as it zooms around the sun. So the Earth carries an enormous amount of momentum. Now, momentum units are based fundamentally on mass, kilograms, velocity, meters per second, and there is no shortened unit. So momentum has units of kilograms, meters per second. In terms of talking through problems, I, I will refer to a, a, a unit of momentum. So put it in here in the notes just so you know that as I talk through and talk about a momentum unit, one unit of momentum I'm going to say is equal to one kilogram meter per second. Okay? So it just shortens the, the notation in terms of our discussions. Notice momentum is a vector quantity. That is very important. In fact, it is the biggest notion of momentum that I have found students struggle with in terms of getting problems correct when they go to answer what mathematically is a simple problem but ends up conceptually being difficult if you don't focus on the fact that momentum is a vector quantity. For example, if you take a 2 kilogram object, please put this in your notes. If you take a 2 kilogram object moving at 3 meters per second to the right, you would calculate that that object has a momentum of 6 momentum units to the right. Well, let's take a, another object, also a 2 kilogram object moving at 3 meters per second. So it also has a magnitude of 6 momentum units, but now it has 6 momentum units up. Well, that is a big no-no in terms of saying they are equal. Their magnitude is the same, 6 is 6, but six momentum units up is not the same as six momentum units to the right. To make the six momentum units to the right be exactly the same as the six momentum units up, what we would need to do is totally stop the particle from moving to the right and make it start moving up at 3 meters per second. Now I can say yes, 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 the momentums are the same. Momentum is a vector quantity. Okay, we know Newton's second law, F equals ma, so that's what I have here. Sum of the forces external equals mass times the acceleration of the center of mass. Well, the acceleration of the center of mass is delta V over delta T. If the mass of the system is not changing, then it's a constant. I can bring it in with the delta V, and voila, look, here's where momentum comes from. I get the mV when I factor that mass in. So rather than just use mV and keep saying mV, 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 we've adopted the language of momentum and have called mVP. But now, look, we have a, a new form of Newton's second law. What we have is that F equals delta P on delta T. Well, I now have a new way of looking at forces. 
we have a new way of looking at forces. So if we plot momentum, P, on the y-axis, and you'll get more comfortable as we go along now in the course talking about momentum and momentum units. If we plot P on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, then what we get is rise over run is slope. So the slope of the tangents on a momentum versus time graph gives us the force. No force, no slope. Positive slope, positive force. Negative slope, negative force. Steep slope, big force. So please make sure you get all of this down into your notes. You don't need all my checks and extra notations here. But please make sure that you get all of the original annotations uh, down into your notes. Now, we do have a special case when there are no external forces, and often there will be no external forces, especially when, as I have here, we have any collision or explosion. There will not never be external forces during the actual collision or the actual explosion. When there are no external forces, we get a zero on the left-hand side of this equal sign, which means the right-hand side of the equal sign has to be zero. And the only way the right-hand side of that equal sign can be zero is if delta P itself is zero. So if the left-hand side of the equal sign is zero, delta P must be zero which means P initial equals P final. That is a statement of conservation of momentum. And keep in mind, it is a vector quantity. So we absolutely have to have everything the same if we are saying P initial equals P final. And I know there was kind of a lot of new concepts here relative to where we've, what we've talked about so far but hopefully it was relatively straightforward. And again, I'm going to erase the ink here so you can copy the original notations and make sure your notes are complete. And we will do some homework problems and continue along with systems and now momentum.